Hello everyone, today let's talk about graphing the square root function y equals square root of negative x minus 3. The first thing that we are going to do is to rewrite it in the form so that it's easier for us to apply the transformations. So we are going to factor out negative 1 from both terms here. So we factor out the negative 1 here. And so we are going to get negative 1, and then what happens is that we are going to have the um, the x inside the parentheses. So uh, when you distribute this negative back to the x, then we get negative x. And then now the sign must change for the, for the 3. So we get plus 3 here. So we have negative x and then negative 3. So as you can distribute this back, and then you get back to the original function. So now what we're going to do is that we are going to start applying the transformations. In this video, we are going to do it two ways. The first way we are going to do it is that we are going to apply the reflection, as you can see here with the negative sign inside the square root. So what happens is that we are going to look at the second one. We have y equals square root of negative x. And then because this is a horizontal reflection, the shape of the graph, it's going to be reflected into the other direction. So now what really happens is that we are going to change the x value. So all the x values will be uh, opposite right now when we apply this reflection. So the zero doesn't really matter. And as you can see that it is still the same. Okay. And then the next one, the next one is that the one becomes like the one. And then the, the y value doesn't change. And then the the third key point, we have the 4 originally. Now it's negative 4. So that's the opposite of the original value. And then there was a 2. <clears throat> okay, now you actually may not even need to bother with writing down those key points because you can actually do the reflection here. This is a reflection about the y-axis. Okay, so we can actually write it down also, reflection about the y-axis. So that's a horizontal reflection. So now if we plot that point, it's the same point over here and then negative the one one. And as you can see, negative the one one is right here. So see that it, this point is mirrored to the other side of the y-axis but the same distance to the y-axis. Same thing here, four units away from the y-axis and then four units away on the other side. So one, two, three, four. So we get this point. So as you can see that we actually don't even need to write down those key points, but I'm just showing that here's so that you understand then what actually is happening when we do this horizontal reflection. So now I'm just going to still make this a dash curve. And then this one is the second one. Okay, now what about the, um, the one with the plus three? This time we are going to have the, um, the horizontal shift. And so we have y equals square root of negative and then x plus 3 finally we get to the um, the final graph and as you can see that we are going to do the shifting the sh shape doesn't really change here okay so the shape will still be the same and we are just moving the graph as you can just think of moving the graph here so that's a horizontal shift to now this plus 3 saying that we are going to shift to the left three units and so what really happens is to the key points <clears throat> in this case would be what now we're because it's a horizontal uh, reflection so we are still going to change the x values so what really happens is that we are going to subtract the three so we get zero minus three we get negative three and then we get zero and the other one is that we are going to get what? Minus three, we get a the four. And then the y value doesn't change. And then this one minus three, so we are going to get a the seven. And then we are going to get the two. <clears throat> and so um, because we our scale, we only label up to negative five, so we may not be able to graph this key point, but it doesn't matter. Um, we are just shifting this second graph to uh, 
to the left, three units to the left. So we are going to move this point one, two, and three. So this point now goes here, and then this point one, two, and three. So we get this point, and then we also move three units to the left, but we we don't have that here, so we don't need to worry about it anymore. So I'm just going to graph this one. So the shape is going to be that. So this is our final graph. <clears throat> so I'm using a solid curve to graph it. And then right now, there is one more thing that we need to do is to simply find the domain, the range, right? So we have the domain and the range. The domain, what is the domain? Um, as you have seen in my previous videos, you actually can find the domain by just looking at the function without having to look at the graph. But of course, because we already have the graph, then finding the domain, the range will be a lot easier by just looking at the graph. So as you can see that we actually, the graph will just keep going to the far left, right? So we have the domain that's covering all the values less than or equal to negative three for the X. So we are going to get negative infinity. And then we go all the way up to here, and then there is nothing on this side, right? So we have up to negative three, and that's how far they will cover. And then the negative three is also being included here, so we are going to use brackets. Now, what about the range? Because there is no vertical transformations. And so as you can see here, we are still going to have the, uh, in this case, we are still actually going to have the same range as the original function, as you can see that graph three and then graph one, right? We'll have the same range. So in this case, what happens? We are going to start from zero, okay? Including zero, and then go to infinity. And so that's it for this graphing. And then I'm going to redo this problem in a different way by switching the order of the transformation and see how that works. Okay, now let's graph the same function with a different order of applying the transformations. So how do we do that? Um, the one that we did before was that we first apply the uh, horizontal reflection and then after that we did a horizontal shift and now we are going to do the horizontal shift first okay so what we're going to do is that we are going to just look at the y equals square root of x plus three and see that i don't put the negative sign yet right because we are going to apply the reflection later so um when we do this then the um the shape doesn't really change, but we are moving the whole graph three units to the left. So we have a horizontal shift to the left three units. And so um, we can just look at the key points and then because the shape doesn't change because we're moving the graph. So we have three units to the left. So one, two, and three. So we get this point here and then same thing here, one, two, and three. So, and then also that one, one, two, and three. And then now this is our second step. Okay. <clears throat> so now what really happens is that we also need to think about um, shifting the uh, axis of reflection because next step is that we are going to apply a horizontal reflection. So what really happens is that we have our, initially if we just to do the uh, reflection on the parent function, what happens is that we are going to reflect about the y-axis. But this time because we already did the shifting and when we apply the reflection, we actually need to apply the reflection about this line here so um, initially the axis the line of reflection is actually at x equals zero but now it's going to be at x equals negative three okay and so when we apply the um, the reflection we are going to have okay so but y equals square root of negative x plus three Okay, so now we do the reflection and then, so now we reflect the graph. So now the shape looks like this. This one is a horizontal reflection. About, not about the y-axis anymore, but it will be about the line. X equals negative 3. Okay, and so 
this point, because it's on the line reflection, so we're not going to do anything to it, we're still at the same point. What about this point? This point is one unit away from the line. So on the other side, we have this point. We, so we mirror this point to the other side. So we've reflected this point to the other side. Same thing for that one, but then um, we don't have <clears throat> enough uh, space for us to draw that point. So we are going to just pretend that, okay, so it's there. So now we have the graph. And this is our final graph. And the domains the range and the range are the same as before, so I'm not going to spend the time writing it down here, but then you can see that that's the same graph as the one that we had before. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will do uh, another one with the, uh, the stretches and the compression next time. Okay, thank you for watching.